Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's start with the next session. And uh, we are very glad and very proud that, that we have so, so VIP colleagues, so that we found VIP colleagues we invited to discuss. What you have seen is that, uh, of course, the technology issues are very interesting, the standardization issues are very interesting, but the open topic in my point of view is, what is a big influence to, to our industry? And therefore, we invited uh, colleagues to discuss that. And of course, we are very proud. On one hand, uh, you see here the, the four empty chairs. So the first guest uh, is Dr. Kleineberg. Dr. Kleineberg is a CTO of uh, Industrial Network Solution and Director PM for Security Wireless at Hirschmann Automation and Control. A warm welcome, Dr. Kleineberg. The second Hello. chair is for, for Kevin, Kevin Benisch. Kevin Benisch is Department Leader, Smart Technology and Industry. Uh, v VDE uh, Testing and uh, Certification Institute. And before that, he was responsible for the standardization in Germany. A warm welcome, Mr. Benisch. The third chair here is for Alexander Gerfer. Alexander Gerfer is the CEO of Word Electronic ISOS and the CTO for Word Electronic ISOS Group. A warm welcome to you, Mr. Gerfer. Good morning. And last but not least, we welcome uh, Dr. Kegel. Dr. Kegel is the CEO of Peppel and Fuchs. And uh, I would like to use the opportunity to, to congratulate, uh, send you uh, congrats uh, to the, the new vote. So since beginning of October, you are the new president of the ZVEI. A warm welcome to you, Dr. Kegel, as well. Dr. Kegel, you can hear us? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Okay, I perfect. Guess so. Yeah. <laughs> so a, warm, a warm welcome. So once again, to underline, uh, today we are 39 uh, members in our association, and of course all these members and also the customers of uh, and the interest uh, colleagues from the SPE uh, uh, for SPE are interested in all the statement what you will give. And the key question, and I would like to start with one opening question, is: Is the investment in single pay Ethernet? Is it worthwhile? Is it the right time? And last but not least, what are you basing it on? Dr. Kegel, would you start? Yeah, in general, I think uh, the idea was uh, when we all started with Industry 4.0 and the digitalization of our industries, uh, starting with the shop floor, that we found out that we have no appropriate physical layer to do so. Uh, the the uh, established Ethernet physical layers are not suitable for the harsh environment of industry, and therefore it was absolutely necessary to develop such a new physical layer that can be easily wired uh, with um, almost no chance to actually mix up the wires, uh, which can be pretty complicated with standard Ethernet technology. And uh, we had to solve the uh, energy supply problem at the same time because um, nobody likes, specifically in, in process industries, but also in discrete industry, likes to do a two wiring of information, uh, data or something like this. And in addition to this uh, power, uh, whenever we can do this on two lines only, uh, this is appreciated. You can see this in all the legacy products. Even the 4 to 20 milliamp, which is the 95% connectivity of process industry sensors as of today, it's still two wires for energy and information. And people like to stay with this convenient uh, structure. And therefore, it was absolutely uh, necessary to develop such a uh, single pair Ethernet technology from both sides, from the angle of uh, process industries, but also from the angle of factory automation. We, we see other sectors also been very interested in it, be it automotive industry and so on. But for us, it's really the standard physical layer to really stretch out Ethernet into the last corner of our process plants and factories. Okay, very, very interesting. Uh, Mr. Mr. Benish, what, what do you think? Uh, if, if it is the right time to invest in single pay Ethernet now? Mr. Benish, we cannot hear you. You're, you're muted. Oh, I think you can yeah. hear me now. Yeah, um, perfect. Especially in these times, I think it's clear that the investment on digitalization cannot be enough. And uh, in the field of sensor and actors, um, we see that the amount of data communication will increase really in, tremendously in the future. And I, on my opinion, 
the topic of IoT and industrial Ethernet will be raised on the next level with SPI. Um, it's the absolutely physical basis for Industry 4.0, but still it's a really difficult strategic decision um, right now to dig into this technology. I think it's very important to starting with pilots, but we will soon see if there is a coming out new ideas uh, within automotive industries or other industries that these pilots will be regular installations. Okay. Mr. Gerfer, what, what do you think? You're also a pioneer for this kind of technologies like single pay Ethernet. What do you think? Is it the right time? Oh, my mute is off. So, uh, thanks first of all having me. Uh, I have to say I'm a bit the old though. I'm a pure analog design engineer from heart. Okay. So, thanks for having me on the single pay Ethernet discussion today. Is it the right time? Um, I, I see it from this. Um, point of view, innovation is needed in any any means for, for going forward in, in our industries. And so if we can show, and we can show here, it, it's making things easier as before, then this will be a good time now to do things different as we did them before. So I see in single uh, business that we solve some, some problems which we have right now still in the, in the field, but applying it into the field. And um, as we have seen here, this network is a pure network of companies saying uh, we collaborate here. It's prominent companies in this group, which helps to say to the customers, to the users, to the new users, to it, um, don't worry too much. There's a lot of expertise in behind, a lot of standardization done for you in behind. Um, you can do it and we support you in any means, in any levels where you are are unsecure or where you want to dive deeper and that's the right thing to do and of course it's now the right time to do it because we have good things here we can combine things which we couldn't combine before and i would say it's a good time and we have to start it absolutely dr kleinerberg let's let's come to the devices the field devices or the devices for uh, for switches something like that uh, what what do you think is it the right time to invest in in single pay ethernet and what are you going to do? Yeah, long story short, absolutely the right time. So when we look at, at the world of automation, it's it's undergoing a radical change right now. And it is mostly visible or clear, most clearly visible right now in factory automation, but it's applied to other uh, vertical markets as well. So it's what sometimes is referred to as the ITOT convergence. It's the advent of, of value added services that just weren't there before, like data analytics, machine learning. We have a lot more requirements from our customers coming in, faster shifts in supply and demand because of global shifts. I mean, you can see it with COVID. Uh, that, that had a radical effect on, on, our, uh, on, on our market. So uh, to realize all of the value coming out of this, especially out of new technologies like, like data analytics, uh, machine learning, you need faster, better networks. You need ubiquitous networks that can reach from the, uh, the the cloud or the on-premise cloud down to the uh, sensor, to the to the field layer. And SPE is exactly the technology to provide that. And um, it's it's part of this of the shift and it supports the shift. And this is why it's time to invest in it right now because of the value that is now visible. Okay. One question to you, Dr. Kleinenberg. Why did Hirschman Automation and Control as an Ethernet switch vendor uh, make the move to actively support the SPE technology on one hand, and on the other hand, you to also support the IEC 63171-6 connector. So what was the reason for doing that? Yeah, that's actually quite a, a good question, and it has been asked uh, numerous times in the in the past, and uh, it's, I would say, a, a question we can approach and an answer from a couple of directions. So I'm, I'm trying to phrase it into two uh, different directions right now. So overall, as a switch vendor or active component vendor, we could just lean back and wait and see what, what's what's coming coming up. So which connector technology will prevail? Will SPE really be a thing? So, um, but looking looking at that and what I just said about ITOT conversions, we made a decision that we cannot just lean back. We need to shape. We need to make sure that we put ourselves in in the in the spotlight and help to get the shift going because we from our customers we got the the information 
we really want this. We want this going forward. We want to realize the value. And uh, the the active components, the switches and routers play a very, very important role in the ecosystem of SPE. So it will not fly, so to say, with without the, the switches. So this is why we said we cannot lean back and, and wait. We need to take an active stance and, and support this because, and this is sort of uh, transitioning into one of my uh, two topics that I want to target, because there is a sort of a time window where, that we have where we have to realize the SPE value right now. So, but well, first of all, the, the first aspect I want to, to touch is that Ethernet promises and has held that promise for a couple of, uh, of decades now as a unified transport layer. So it's really a unified transport layer available to all of technologies, to higher protocols, to realize uh, a, a standardized and reliable way of uh, moving data from A to B. And, um, if you're looking at uh, a converged Ethernet uh, on the on the field layer, it really doesn't make sense to have the converged Ethernet technology and then use different connectors because then you will you will separate your 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 essential value add of the uh, of the Ethernet technology on the field. So we also made a decision: yes, let's support a specific connector technology and make sure it is supported on the market in a way so that all of our customers and uh, all of the partners in this network can realize its value. So it's it's clear that switches and routers are the linchpin of, of our infrastructure. So we need to shape and not hold back. And uh, we would like to see uh, things converging to a single technology, obviously. So then the universal transport layer is now being adopted with a couple of other technologies, um, most prominently maybe IO link, but others are looking into, into this as well. So X, I'm calling it X over SPE or X over Ethernet. So it's it's over Ethernet, but SPE reaching down to the field level has the, is the necessary enabler to get this going. And as I said, you will need switches and routers for that. You cannot all do everything with a daisy chain. So this is why we are active, and that's one of the angles. And the other well, that means angle that is a bit around. If I get, get it right, you would like to be in the, in the driver's seat, is it right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, that's, 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 I'd, that's I'd rather good. I'd rather shape yeah. than, than being shaped. Yeah, kind of like, we talk very, very often, uh, a lot of time now about factory automation. Uh, do you think SPE is relevant for other other vertical markets as well? Absolutely. Um, I think the the one that is most prominent is most likely, at least from our perspective, we already talked a bit. Uh, Dr. Kittle talked about uh, about um, process, but we are also seeing it very prominently uh, uh, of value in the transportation market. It's about size. It's about robustness. It's about weight. All of those those topics that are very relevant to to the transportation market as well. So likely we will see it in in most of the vertical markets where automation technologies is in. Are there other aspects besides the standardization, Ethernet transport, uh, that are important for the market and for the customers? I mean, what is absolutely important is on the one hand. Uh, that not only the, the transport technology is available, but also that power is, is available. So power over data line combination with SPE is important. It's important to have more flexibility in regard to reach versus bandwidth so that you can scale it better, what, whatever you will need on technology. So additional work that is being done in IEEE right now is important. And last but not least, what is very important is the OPC UA and TSN uh, FLC uh, technology that is being developed right now. That is real-time technology going down to the field layer uh, that is based on standardized technology. All of the large uh, automation vendors have committed to that and they are using Ethernet as a transport. And that is now in a uh, one to three year time window going forward. And that time window is also showing the time window that we need to hit for SPE because obviously OPC, FLC will use Ethernet, but if it's SPE, and we would like it to be SPE Ethernet, but for it to be actually workable, it needs to be ready. And this is why it's now the correct time to invest in it. Ah, interesting, interesting point. Uh, you also talk about this, this topic of standardization, and I would like to hand over to Mr. To Mr. Benish with a question. Mr. Benish, you are responsible for, for the test in the, in the Test Institute for Smart Technologies and Industry. And of course, uh, your former head of, uh, of uh, electrical standardization in Germany. 
I think uh, it's, it's very interesting to talk uh, to ask you the question. What do you think about single pay Ethernet? Could it be the standard for the future? A, a common standard for for automation in general? Uh, definitely, it, uh, because there are some factors which which was really in this development scene here, which which really could see that that here a, a milestone is reached because. Uh, SPS, uh, SPE has brought together different kinds of actors, the connector manufacturers, the cable manufacturers, electronic developers, sensor de um, developers and manufacturers, and end users. And they all come together, not, not only in, in one standardization area, across different kinds of standardizations organizations. And I think this was the key here, really, that they brought together IEEE, IEC, TR, the Joint Technical Committee for Information Technology, and not that only one part of the world did something here, so, so that really they combined their knowledge, their experiences from the past, and with the requirements, bringing more data possibilities into the field sensors, in the more interconnectability. And I think this was really, um, um, the key for this development that now this technology will very broadly accepted. And in general, and this, as Mr. Kleinberg says, um, this, the standardization of DC power and communication networks, it's a, it's a really ongoing major trend in field of industrial communication. We have real uh, the necessity that the DC power um, uh, and we have quite a, a, a huge variance there. We are not only talking about 24 or 48 uh, voltage or 60 voltage. We have, if we, if we are looking across t um, technologies, if we look in the train business, if we look in infrastructure, we have so many different power levels. It's really the necessity here to bring more in standardization. There is a, a, quite a lot of ongoing, and this will be really the key that we can combine the connection of power and the communi uh, communication into uh, one physical layer. Ah, okay, okay. And what, what do we think, especially if we come back, come back to the topic of standardization? In your point of view, why is it so important to have a clear standardization on one hand for the infrastructure situation, so connectors, cables and all this stuff? On the other hand, the protocols, the, the, the transmission standards as well. What, what do you think, How, why is it so important for, for the general market approach for single pay Ethernet? Um, if you're looking from the past, in the past, uh, products have been standardized uh, or standardization was more product oriented. And we see now that uh, we have even product developers have more to think about cross borders. So uh, in IC, it was for several years, it was created some kind of systems approach. And I think also for this technologies, it's very, very important that we are really looking side by side even developers taking into account different kind of technologies and bring them together in one committee and we have it also here that that we have really good i would say different kind of competitors together but they are not competing within the standard we had also a standard competition but here really to bring on new ideas and cross-border also the standardizations organizations Many industry um, segments are also quite conservative in their investments. And there is very important that a standard is built up where many, many, especially or small uh, companies can have some kind of orientation. And I think that SPE is here really something in the market where it can, this can give orientation to the companies and giving their investments in this technology. Um, also, when I looked into the standard, is that SPE has created a very robust standard, open up for further in, uh, innovation. This is also important. So a standard has never been finalized. It's a, it's a continuous process ongoing. So I, I'm quite sure that we, that we will see the standards mentioned uh, this morning, that, that this in the second, third, fourth edition will, will further develop it. But it gives a really good orientation for the market right now. And I think um, from from my experience here, that this this um, experiences from the market will also further develop SPE um, in a very very robust um, yeah, standardization environment. Yeah, 
Mr. Benic, it sounds it sounds to me like having a new a new fan for our approach. What we do what we do with single piece and industrial partner network is it right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's this is this is quite important. Eh? You you need commitments, and I think the this uh, SPE um, association is a commitment of industry, and I think this is this is quite important that that not only um, manufacturers from one side, but very different kind of industry players are come together, think of, and I think this is this is very very an important key for for enabling technologies. Yeah, we in the past we see quite often. Um, that it was pushed by one into the market and then there was uh, sometimes you see the competition. Competition is very, very important to, uh, for further development, but um, here to bringing very uh, a, a step ahead standardization or the, the results of a standardization, I think that the, this association of SPE is a really good, uh, I would say, enabler of the game. Yeah, thank you much. Sounds very, very good. Mr. Geffer. I would like to come come back to your statement. What you uh, what you what you did as we opened this uh, this session. Uh, what do you mean with the topic of limits? You talked about some limits. Uh, what what we what we are facing in the industry at the moment. What what do you think? Uh, what what is the meaning of the limits you are talking about? I come quickly back to Kevin. I'm fully committed, as you can see. But we have a sticker <laughs> of SPE, so as Wirt Electronic, we committed fully to this technology. So limitations, what I mean in my perspective, um, I'm, I'm not the deep diver in all these things here of protocols and physical layers. I'm, as I said, an analog engineer, but we have a lot of customers and we talk to customers about connectors and we've also connectors in our range, of course. And for me, it's when I look at it, then I see we have the chance here to simplify things. We have more robust connectors, more smaller connectors. We can use the infrastructure better than we do it before. This is one of, of things the single pay Ethernet can solve. It makes the things better than they are today. The connectors we have nowadays are not really made for such things, harsh environments. So it's robustness is a very key aspect here. Um, and another thing is the flexibility of the wiring. I, I can do it more flexible because I don't have to think so much about is it now correct wired or not. It's two, it's one pair. It should be and is very simple. That's why I say these limitations of the old technology are better solved with the new technology. Yeah. Mr. Geff, I, I tried to install it by myself. It works. So only two wires. <laughs> it's okay for me as well. So, so that's great. Uh, yeah. what, what, what do you think? Uh, what are the additional advantages for single pays and technology? Do you have anything in mind? Mm, absolutely. So uh, in terms of we also talk a bit about costing. There was an argument, I guess, what we heard sometimes is about the cost, uh, but we have to talk about the total cost of solution. And you have to see if you run 1.7 kilometers of copper wire, which you can do, um, which was demonstrated by Texas Instruments now, um, this copper um, in demand in the market is increasingly going up and going up. So copper also costs money for the wiring. Um, so Eventually, yes, the overall thing is a bit more expensive on the side of, of the sensor side eventually, but the wiring also makes costs on the wiring side. Then we save a lot of uh, copper overall if we have only one pair to use and not four or three or two. Yeah? So we, we have a lot of cost savings here. And of course, you can on the, on the, you com combine more sensors. I give an example eventually, a more simple example. Um, I was yesterday doing my, my indoor cycling and I was wondering why I'm going so off my limits and my, uh, my power. Yeah, because you have a variable and it tells you afterwards, after your session, um, your body temperature went up. You went too hot, did not do good ventilation. So we have the chance when we talk about sensors at the point of where we want to sense it, um, not only to place one sensor, we have the sensor for, let's say, vibration or whatever. And additionally, a temperature sensor, which tells us the better story of what goes on. And I get this information fully on the single pay Ethernet transported without any problem. So I do something on the edge still, and I can use a single pair to transport all the information to there where I want to access the information and, and more validate the, the importance of that sensor signal. So mm -hmm. it's actually a very simple approach or a simple thing into it, but it makes my life easier. I can do now things which I could do before or it took me longer time to think about and how to solve it. Ah, okay, okay, okay. 
Uh, where, where, where do you see your strengths? Or, or let's let's start one one topic topic earlier. Uh, if we are talking about the placement of single pay Ethernet, what do you think? What could be the biggest obstacle to do that? Um, we have, of course, in any any market approaches when we go for innovations, we have to look and to see from the customer side. Do the end users, the customer, understand this technology? So we have to make them aware about the advantages. What's in it for you, what makes the life easier for you. And we have to, of course, solve some things eventually. Um, I'll give you another example. So we had this for these younger listeners here. Um, the compact disc was a standard created, but the compact disc had a big trouble in the beginning. Sony and Philips were a bit fighting about the real standard. And they found two solutions. They made the compact disc later on to one standard, and that lifted off the technology. Okay, nowadays it's caught by streaming, but this, <laughs> the compact disc itself is still available and still in the market. Uh, but the standardization overall, also down to the, um, the user side, and this terms the connector would be the case. That's what I'm, I'm still looking for as a customer. Find a way to get this connector thing in, in one standard. That would help me a lot. Um, it would make the life easier for, for the users if this is also solved on top of it. Yeah, very, very it's interesting. Us, and then, of course, you as a... As yeah. we committed to it, we see um, there's a lot of good things in the technology. That's why you said we commit to it. Yes, we want to go there. Of course, you as a component uh, uh, manufacturer, it's also necessary to to create some some solutions for the EMC topic. And of course, you you as a company will do that. Yeah, we are one hundred percent sure. Okay, Dr. Dr. Tegel. Now, now I would like to ask you one question. The last time I saw a lot of a lot of statements from you, and I read it, read it also in in the in in, in articles that you repeatedly stress the topic of uh, climate protection and for climate protection that we do not have to cancel technologies or use less technologies uh, the other way around. We need additional technologies, but smart ones. So uh, what do you think? Uh, how can mega trends such as I, uh, Industry 4.0, IIoT or SPE uh, can help to master these steps? Yeah, you asked me to draw a line from the most important questions of our times down to uh, SPE, single pair Ethernet. That's, uh, I will give you a general statement and maybe an example to make it more clear. First of all, uh, the Z4E, so the Association of Electrotechnical Industries, strongly believes uh, that we cannot uh, attack climate change um, with cutting back um, consuming structures, cutting back um, a lifestyle and convenience of people. Uh, in the fact of the matter is that uh, the vast majority of people on the planet is still looking for this convenient technology. They're still looking for cars. They're still looking for washing machines and refrigerators. So uh, when you look at India, when you look at China, 100 millions of people do not even participate in consuming over there. So even if it could be a message for us in the Western world, well, uh, cut back your spendings, uh, uh, cut back your consume. It's not uh, a message to India. It's not a message to China, of course. And therefore, the only way is not to change our behavior in regards of spending less, doing less, uh, making less, going backwards uh, in the decades, but go forward instead with innovations. So make it possible that we all can be individually mobile, our own refrigerators and stuff like this without ruining our planet and without ruining the climate that is desperately necessary for us to survive. So as such, we strongly believe we should stop talking about uh, the, the question of what should we stop, um, but really focusing on what's the new stuff, what can we do in regards of technology. And as such, every enabling technology is really necessary and welcomed and appreciated because it helps to do the necessary innovational steps. I give you just one example to make it obvious. Uh, when we uh, look in uh, energy uh, production and energy consumption, we have a, uh, a pretty desperate discoupling of all the sectors. So we have many sectors that actually produce energy like heat, uh, which is not used but wasted and other sectors which at the same times would require heat, but we are not coupling these sectors simply because we have no capability to really make it happen on the base of uh, the, the, the factories, on the base of the shop floor over there. Because our shop floor today is simply encapsulated in a silo. 
it doesn't give us any appropriate data or information, just the one that we need to run our factories and plants um, uh, secure and efficiently, but it's no data available that can be used to cross-couple uh, the sectors, for example, for energy. If uh, we really manage to bring SP down to the field, we have a gigantic IIoT and industrial internet of things that uh, strictly and um, straightforward allow us to connect the different sectors to each other. And that would be extremely helpful to use energy more smartly. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So right, uh, now I'd like to come back. Uh, you're talking about the field communication level, and of course that's that's one of the key topics uh, you're you're acting in with your with your company as well. So my question now is, uh, what what is the topic of process industry, and why do the process industry need single pays in it? Yeah, we've stressed this already. Uh, the, 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 the reasons are not any different uh, in the industries, although the technical implementations look uh, slightly different, uh, specifically on the mechanical form factor. But the reason, uh, something like six years ago, we were sitting together, Fieldbus Foundation and Hart Foundation, and uh, both uh, finally found out the physical layer that they currently provide is definitely not enough to lead the industry into digitalization. So we had a hard interface with some 300 bits per second and um, uh, the 35 uh, kilohertz or kilobit for the Fibus Foundation or Profibus PA. That's definitely not enough uh, to really run IP protocols and uh, to become a seamless integral part of IP communication. And therefore, these two groups decided to start this um, uh, APL, Advanced Physical Layer, which actually today is SPE. It's the same standard. It's the same IEEE 10 base T1L. The only difference is uh, that we also provide another IEC standard uh, to it to actually gain the necessary intrinsic safe explosion hazardous area protection, which is regulated in IEC 679, which is our standard or general standard for uh, explosion protection and their chapter 47 which is currently uh, a circulated draft status so we expect this to be published uh, in year 2020 and that's exactly the right time to come up with devices as we have now found chip vendors that also provide us the first silicon to actually do the integration of the jobs and that's also very important and has not been stressed um, uh, so far in our discussion without having a standard you uh, may not be able to really motivate the chip vendors uh, to uh, heavily invest into silicon over there because their investment is a one-time investment of millions to finally get the chip done and they are not doing this without a, a ground standard without any foundation of this and that was the very importance of 10 base t1l that we are all sitting on and now we are actually dividing it into different chapters and i'm absolutely sure the different domains um, will require different mechanical form factors and process industry for example doesn't in many cases doesn't require connectors at all because it's an open cable end that you have to uh, go through uh, cable glands and stuff like this so uh, any kind of connector is not appreciated over there they need open end and uh, easy wiring of it and that's the importance of uh, single pair ethernet it is easy wiring it's highly robust and it provides us the necessary cable lengths uh, the ti chip that has recently been announced uh, even offers 1.7 kilometers cable lengths that uh, exceeds our own specification which is only thousand meters so it shows that the robustness of these networks um, using this silicon uh, might be very advantageous. So uh, all in all, I strongly believe this is the perfect physical layer and process industry is even more dedicated for this as our sensors are of higher value. We are talking about complex pressure sensors. We are talking about uh, partially even radar level sensors. We are talking about very complex flow meters and stuff like this. And uh, they can bear the cost for single Ethernet integration easily. Uh, it's a few bucks only on top of that. That looks a little different when you look at uh, discrete industries. There we have very simple sensors like proximity sensors, which are simply too inexpensive to bear the additional cost of a direct single pair Ethernet integration. Therefore, we see mixed forms. Uh, uh, Mr. Kleinfeld already mentioned IOLink over IP is a, is a good example to use uh, SPE as a physical layer and actually have a transparency in these protocols and still have the minimum costs of IOLink down to the very simple sensors. So in the factory automation, we see a split world of IOLink and SPE going down directly into the sensor, the more complex ones, think of LiDAR scanners or something like this. Whereas in process automation, I don't see anything but 
single pair Ethernet or advanced physical layer being the de facto standard uh, or becoming the de facto standard uh, in uh, the years to come. Uh, so I'm absolutely confident that the APL is 100% fit for process industry and SPE is the other mechanical form factor of the same standard is the perfect fit for, for this grid industry. This is really a, a great achievement uh, over there. We, we worked on this for five, six years. It was hard to get rid of the automotive people that only wanted to drag the standard into their fields with short cable lengths and so on, which is not usable for us, but we made it. We finally made it with additional effort in the standardization groups. We brought our own people into IEEE. We brought our own people into IEC to provide the necessary uh, explosion hazardous error protection uh, standard. And that's not already. And um, I think that uh, our industry, especially process industry, is, is waiting on this standard to be rolled out and to be used in the plants. That sounds, that sounds very good. So at the end of, uh, of the day, we can say is a misunderstanding. Sometimes what I heard from the market that single per Ethernet and APL is a different story. We can say, no, it is not. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's an additional part, additional requirements come from APL. But then the end, at the end of the day, we are talking about single per Ethernet. Is it right? Yeah, absolutely. It's the same chips that we use uh, in, in both our sensors. The only thing is that we have some additional, uh, mostly discrete um, uh, components to uh, achieve the necessary uh, explosion protection. And that's it. But the rest is real straightforward single pair Ethernet. It's this identical standard. It's just the, the different mechanical form factors. And I'm sure other sectors use uh, uh, Another mechanical standard, when you think of building automation, for example, uh, I can imagine that they use a, uh, additional standards for, for the mechanical components and, and uh, even for the connectors. We will see, the market will take a decision on this. Uh, by the way, we had this argument uh, going back and forth uh, several times that when we are not having one single standard, this is not helping us to create the necessary adoption rate with our customers because customers feel confused and so on. I partially disagree with that statement. Um, as soon as we can provide the necessary evidence that this technology brings additional benefits, customers will buy it. And as long as they don't see the benefits, they use uh, the conflicting standards as an excuse not to do it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. we are, we are taking away point. some excuses when we actually agree on a standard, but the standard is not blocking the adoption rate if the technology provides enough benefits. So it's it's yeah, more yeah. the question of creating benefits and making these benefits visible for the customer than the question is everything uh, accordance to one standard. As I th said, in process industry, nobody cares about a uh, connector as, um, as most of the stuff is running without um, uh, uh, connectors, just uh, open cable ends. At the end of the day, of course, it is it is like in private uh, private life. If you see benefits for something, and you, then you're willing to buy it. Of course, that's that's clear, and, and you're willing to use it. Okay, now uh, all of you talking are uh, talking about uh, sensors, and and that sensors are very important. And of course, we as a uh, SP Industrial Partner Network, we also see that the topic of sensors is very important for for the placement of single pair Ethernet technology. And therefore, we started uh, to make a collaboration. In, in Germany, we have one association called the AMA, and we started to cooperate with the AMA. AMA is, uh, is an association of sensor manufacturers. And of course, uh, we uh, decided to work together with, with them as a network. So they are also in a registered association like we are. And we say it makes absolutely sense to do things together, to tone up the, the speed or to have an acceleration uh, to place single pair Ethernet to the market and also to involve the sensor topic. And uh, therefore, we would like to, to show you a short, short statement from the managing director of the AMA Association. Please uh, start the movie. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thomas Simmons. I'm the general manager of AMA Association for Sensors and Measurement. We are 450 member companies and research institutes, all concerned with sensing and measuring. And um, I'm very glad uh, that we are able to have a cooperation with the single pair Ethernet industrial partner network because I'm convinced that this will further innovation process and innovation in automation, especially because this is such an important um, topic uh, where uh, we see um, uh, innovation happening in the machine to machine communication, but also um, communication inside the intra machine. Uh, components. And so 
both the sensors and this communication technology will be playing key roles. Um, I think that uh, the co co cooperation or collaboration of our associations will help us um, to further the uh, innovation process. We'll have discussion uh, of, uh, of um, cutting edge ideas and new applications. And we will hopefully bring developers together uh, into direct contact so that um, they will have their discussions and they will be right in the middle of the innovation process, which is exactly what AMA strives to support. Um, so overall, I am convinced that our collaboration will mutually benefit the members of, on both sides, both for the SPE Industrial Partner Network and the AMA Association for Sensors and Measurement. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, of course, we we uh, repeat uh, this. This is a statement what what we have done uh, one week ago because uh, he's not able to join us uh, 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 here in this call. So my question to you, uh, dear colleagues, uh, what what do you see? Uh, what do you see? How do you evaluate uh, this cooperation, and what does uh, SPE means for the sensors? Who would like to start? Open discussion. I can do a start um, because we are a sensor manufacturer. Uh, therefore, uh, I, I think we know a little bit about what will be the impact of SP on the sensors. Uh, today, sensors are very often uh, still connected via analog interfaces. So what we actually are uh, actually communicate is not data, but the measurement value. Like Mr. Simmons said, uh, measurement and sensing technology. It's a measurement value without any uh, additional context information. In the industrial Internet of Things, we need data. Uh, measurement values is not enough. Data means digital data with all the necessary context information. Uh, the example was with temperature, body temperature. You have all the context. It's body temperature. You do exercise. You do all uh, kind of stuff. And that allows you to give an interpretation on the temperature value over there. Without that additional context information, this is simply not possible. This is the reason why the uh, community have in, uh, invented the administration shell, the administration shall to really put all the necessary uh, information, context information together and to uh, really create a network, an industrial Ethernet of Thing network uh, that is able to communicate. Uh, and this uh, digital twin association has been established between VDMA and uh, Z4E just recently, so it's, it's going forward over there. Sensors can only participate in this modern IoT networks uh, in accordance to the reference architecture model if they provide data with context information and not just measurement values. So what we need to do, uh, change the measurement values, the measurement uh, devices from today into data sources of tomorrow. And that uh, ASPE is the enabling technology to do so. Without a single pair Ethernet, you have no chance to really change a measurement a sensing device into a data source. But that's what we need to do. We change, have to change okay. sensors into data sources. Okay, Dr. Kleineberg. You yeah, have a sign I, I, that you would like to add something. Yeah, yeah, I, I would, I would like to uh, to uh, take this a little bit further, which is, um, yeah, we are looking at. You, you talked about uh, the sensor values becoming data, and then the next step is obviously from data to information, which is uh, taking on the one hand the contextual values that you that you said, but also not let's say every data value that is transmitted may end up being uh, valuable information so take a take a sensor value that 100 times reports the same same temperature and then uh, we have a temperature change so the the question what of that is is data and what is information so to have this kind of information available everywhere to have the let's say the flexibility of moving data from a to b to move it into data lakes uh, where we can investigated with um, with data analytics methods to have the bandwidth to have the the reach from the very sensor to the storage unit that houses the the data we will need single pay ethernet this is a, a key value enabler it's it's something that that uh, is is at the at the very core of of industry 4.0 and self optimization uh, processes and and this is why uh, why it's so important that that this is being realized and this is why the actual attachment to the sensor, to each and every sensor is so important. 
Benish, could it could it be a good opportunity to to standardize also the 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 understanding of the data you can collect via sensors? Um, yeah, I think there is already uh, something big ongoing within some uh, I would say key industry players, uh, especially ZBEI has has set up uh, in this field together with BDMA, the machinery industry an association to bring this idea of uh, giving more a central ontology uh, in this field of industry 4.0 um, into the market um, replying to mr Kedel, and uh, i think he's it's really the key what he said is that we really need to differentiate between the sensors values and the data and i think edge technology is is the key here what what we will really see in the future with that we will have in the in, in the automation technologies uh, auto process or, uh, automation that we will have some intelligent devices in the field that will use spi uh, really uh, with some mindset bringing the different kind of sensors together uh, my experiences from for example is quite simple resolvers resolvers are analog devices and very very cheap and uh, formally would say why do i need spi here yeah, but you need for resolver, resolver values, you need um, filters yeah? because of the EMC uh, and the behavior of, uh, of environment. Uh, you need probably uh, additional temperature sensor. You need the measurement of a motor current and bringing this these values together, making some intelligence. This needs can really bring them together to data values for further analyzes and at least then for machine manufacturers for services like predictive maintenance and this is what what, what, what we see um, here in, in kind of solutions right now upcoming that they are investing in, in ethernet technologies bringing up sensors uh, together some sensor nodes um, it's quite often called and uh, with these uh, bringing together with sensor nodes they can build up new um, services um, using Ethernet technologies and at least in the connection area, um, I, I see that, that uh, SPI will hear one of the uh, uh, key connectors in, in, in this area. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting, interesting. Where, uh, Mr. Gerfer, where do you see the strengths uh, uh, as a component manufacturer to support SPE, in the co especially in the combination with, uh, with, the, uh, with the sensors? And of course, what do you, do, what do you think about the cooperation with the armor? Um, as for the uh, sensor world, of course, we've seen chipsets now arriving in the market. Uh, and of course, to bring these chipsets to life and to make the things robust in terms of EMC, you need external components. And so we see our strengths, of course, in, the, in this term, we know that the devil sometimes is in the small details in your design, so that you follow all design rules for EMI to, to see the problems, because EMI is seeing the problem, uh, also um, yeah, ensuring an, uh, yeah, immunity against disturbances from, from the external world still arriving in my, my application. So we can give the full support in terms of uh, EMC and components fulfilling and reaching the full EMI level. Um, sometimes in the spec sheet of the manufacturers of uh, chipsets, they say only optional, but we know from the EMI testing the real world behavior. So we say yeah, we guide you through this and we will see if needed or not but if needed we can give you the best and of course and that's important for us a more modern component um, when you look into how the components nowadays are made for ethernet filtering they're too big too large and too expensive uh, i would say and fully agree on this one so that's why we committed and say yes let's bring some new technology into this field and still yeah, have a good uh, yeah, performance and do it collaborative with many companies to make it easy for the user. So another our strength is from, from the design idea to solve an EMI problem, to um, sample and production support. We can do everything from the start of the idea to the final product and enabling us also to bring our innovation, which is eventually only small, but it is an innovation and, and enables the market to get the components, uh, even when the demand now is small because we, um, we have not this limitation like that chipset makers to say they need wafers fully packed or something. Um, we have some limitations, but they are very small, and yeah, we want to go there and support this idea. Yeah, but I think especially in the direction of, of sensors, small the small size of the components and less components than in other Ethernet applications, of course, is a big issue, isn't it? Absolutely, the uh, the new components are 
roughly 80% smaller than the existing ones. And you can do the same or even better filtering because we can go very compact here. Um, that is, of course, a big advantage for the, for the users. You can go as close as possible where you have to be, which, again, before was not so possible and height limitations, whatever comes along with it, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I would like to come to come back to the to the opening question. So the question was: uh, Is the investigation in single pair Ethernet wor uh, uh, worthwhile? Is it the right time to invest in single pair Ethernet? And what are you basing it on? It on? I will try to to summarize uh, uh, your statements here. On one hand, we say a lot of different things are ongoing at the moment, and it's a good time to to create a new physical layer based on single pair Ethernet or like single pair Ethernet. That is one topic. Single pair Ethernet can abolish limits what are what we heard uh, during the discussions so we can create new application opportunities uh, out of this technology uh, the global standardization is really a big issue uh, to to make investments for all the manufacturers of devices uh, 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 to un to underline that it makes sense to invest in single pair ethernet that is a topic and of course also the topic of uh, climate uh, protection is is an issue where single pair ethernet can can build a bridge uh, to have the right technology in place with new technologies to to uh, to solve this uh, this overall problem what we have hey, gentlemen of course i have to say thank you very much but i don't want to say uh, say thank you very much before i ask the final question and my final question is how do you evaluate the approach of the sp industrial partner network on one hand and the other part of the question is where do you see the spe technology in 10 years who would like to start Oh, I'm starting. Okay. So, uh, where do I see the technology? Uh, so, I see it uh, claiming its rightful place along the other uh, Ethernet transport mechanisms. So, it's it's clear that it is purpose made for a specific purpose. So, it will not, let's say, uh, be rolled out to everywhere where Ethernet is today. There are specific areas where uh, a multi-hundred gigabit fiber connection is still going to be used and not SPE is going to be used. But there are specific use cases. And here, SPE will take its place and it, these use cases are significant. So I'm seeing everywhere where the value of SPE can be recognized immediately, SPE will prevail. It's absolutely clear. So it, it will be a, a, sta a, new, a new physical standard and it will be in the market. It's, it's absolutely clear and it will have a very, very good market share. And the approach of the SPE partner network is uh, for me the, the ideal approach actually, because when you have a, reached a certain uh, let's say maturity in the standard, you have to move forward and create an ecosystem with the players from the market. Do you have to prove that interoperability is given that the standards are actually working and uh, to to fill the small gaps that are in the standards? I mean, standards are standards. They are good, but there is uh, at least always some ambiguity. So you need the, the, the organizations to fill those holes and make sure that things are working and to create the trust that is needed uh, for the um, device manufacturers and also the customers to adopt the technology. So this is why the SPE partner network is absolutely essential to the success. Okay, Mr. Geffer, it's your it's your stage now. Okay, also again, as I said in my 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 opening statement, um, a very prominent group of, of companies is here inside this uh, Singapore Internet uh, partner network. So it shows the full commitment. The, uh, the, the will to drive this technology because it has its advantages. We have to make it clear to the market. And I think in a few years, the market has fully understood this. And um, interesting to see the different companies from many fields of applications doing this. And we have to see the big chance of this as well, because if we set here the standards, we can also somehow, let's say in brackets, protect our markets a bit better because the market pressure will not go away and we have to be only fast enough to secure these markets and our growth of our big industrial uh, companies sitting here in, in Europe. And that is why we have to be fast. That's why we're committed. That's why we want to get this rolled out in the field. And we should really be clever doing this before others find other ways to, to say, um, yeah, let's go a different way. Let's roll it out and let's get it done. Then we have a good market share in, in I don't know, uh, more than 20, 30 percent eventually in a few years. That's my my thinking of it. Yeah, thank you very much. 
Mr. Benish, you are coming coming from a testing institute. Uh, what what is your first impression in the direction of the SP Industrial Partner Network, and what do you see in single pay Ethernet for the next ten years or in in ten years? Uh, um, first of all, I I think that the SPE Partner Network is absolutely important to um, to secure that the technology has the, the necessary quality at least, and um, and this is really good. That really big partners, very experienced in the connector, IT um, and sensor manufacturers, uh, because this means that the, from the beginning, this this will be not, I, I would say, an, an alpha implementation. No, it's it's really, I think, proven technology experiences from the connector market here that that this technology will, will work from the beginning. And in 10 years, I, I'm quite sure that we will see um, some sectors that we haven't thought about. So it's on, on my 30 years uh, experience right now, that, that really here we see some sectors which have never been used something like this, but they will see the benefit and, and go into this area. And the second thing is, it will be very interesting on how this technology will enable the, the second life market. The second life market, I call it, uh, all the machines which are in use and which will from time to time upgraded. And um, if this technology is accepted there and they will bring the machines to a higher level, then this technology will really go in uh, faster than only in new installations. And this is, I think this is very, very important. It, it, it needs to be also accepted in the second life market that you, uh, when you upgrade machines with ideas, here, the benefits must be clear for our, for our end users to invest in this technology instead only replacing um, one by one um, the, the technology. Thank you much. So for the last uh, last statement for this discussion, I would like to hand over to our new president of the ZVEI. <laughs> Dr. Kegel, it's your time now. Before Thank you. Yeah. Uh, on the on the factory automation side, uh, I can't imagine that in 10 years from now we have a single greenfield project that doesn't use SP. I, I simply think that the penetration of this technology technology and the adoption curve will be very fast, specifically if we combine it in the right way with lower sophisticated networks such as IO Lingo Ice interface. If we do this in the right combination, SPE will be the de facto standard and will be used in I can, can't imagine that it's less than 100%. So everybody at least considers it, and the vast majority will use it as the de facto standard to wire Ethernet into the harsh environment of a plant or a shop floor. In the process automation, the adoption curve is slower simply because plants are built for a much longer life cycle perspective. We are talking about 25 to 30 years when you build up a steam cracker and you're not changing the automation technology every three years, uh, but maybe if at all on, a, on the DCS level every seven to 10 years and on the sensor level, not at all. Uh, the entire life cycle you stay with one sensor technology over there. So the migration from the one to the other technology takes longer over there, but even here, I'm sure that uh, in 10 years from now, at least something like half of the Greenfield projects will consider uh, SPE or APL as the standard uh, IP connectivity for the shop floor. And that means that the installed base will slowly but surely move away from the analog wiring 4 to 20 milliamp, which is currently dominating uh, into SPE. And I don't think that we should waste too much time in arguing what's the best mechanical fit factor. Simply do what you think is best, the market will decide, and I'm absolutely sure we will see different mechanical solutions in different sectors of our industries. So there's always room for improvement, there's always room for innovation over there. Speed is the king and not the question of, uh, are we all agree on the same stuff? Uh, we have agreed on the basic standard, that's uh, what we call SPE, now let's move forward and uh, let's form interest groups like uh, your own one uh, to uh, accelerate the market uh, development and the speed, but don't try to uh, bring a consensus over the sectors of the industry. You will not manage this uh, specifically when you look at process industry. We also have a connector, but guess what? It's none of the two connectors that we currently discuss because none of it is suitable for explosion hazardous air protected uh, devices simply because we need isolation voltage of 1000 volts, which none of the two uh, connectors can provide. So we are going back to the old 
12 millimeter uh, connector over there. So implementing SPE with this connector stuff. Uh, simply because we want to accelerate the adoption curve, we want to move forward once the standard is now ready and we have the necessary chipsets from two vendors. Meanwhile, uh, there's no blockage stone uh, any longer in the road. So let's move forward and don't waste your time to comment and to criticize what other people do. Move forward with your idea and it will find its market, I'm sure. Well, thank you very much. So per perfect closing words, I think. That's, that's really great. Thank you very much. Of course, gentlemen, I have to say thank you very much to all of you. In my point of view, it was a really, really interesting discussion and hopefully all our participants in, in this, uh, this session uh, will will say the same. Uh, I'm sure a lot of different aspects we have uh, uh, we have discussed now, and I'm very proud that all of you underline that single per Ethernet and also single per Ethernet by using such kind of associations is the right way to approach approach to the market. We will will speed up our activities. We will go on with uh, with that what we have started, and of course uh, we we yeah. We, are, uh, we hope that, that all of you will support our activities and of course uh, we will support maybe maybe each other. Uh, of course, there is opportunity to come closer to the RPL group maybe, uh, to work together to find the right vocabularies, to, to use the single per Ethernet as a complete system. So it's, it's an open invitation of course that we work closer together. So once again, I have to say, say thank you very much uh, to you and now I would like to, to close this session. and. Uh, yeah, the next topic will be, we will have a 10 minutes break now. And after this 10 minutes break, we will start with a with one very important topic in my point of view. We would like to break it down to, to more application oriented uh, discussion. So uh, Xaver Schmidt, uh, he's a representative from, from the Profinet uh, user organization. He will give, give us some, some information about the focus on practice. So use cases for single pair ethernet uh, uh, but uh, in, in the opinion of, of the P&O and Profinet user organization. So once again, thank you very much and see you soon in 10 minutes, okay? Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Stay healthy. Bye.